Good morning, people watching Mid 65, Lisa Boyce. Uh, last night, um, I took the boys to see uh, Top Gun, Maverick. If you want to watch a good movie, go see that. It was outstanding. Um, that's why I didn't come on. We got in late, so I took them to see that. Um, I'm going to give you the Gospels in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried. And rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith. In Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve. That God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, you and I are whosoever's, believe. That's the only requirement in this dispensation of grace. Is that you believe on the finished work of Christ when he shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, you will have eternal life. That's the key. Believing is the key. Sorry for the glare. I can't, I can't change that. I'm sorry. Um, how do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. You put your faith and trust in him. You accept him as Savior, and you're saved. And you're justified by the blood of Jesus. Period. You're justified by the blood. You're saved. The Holy Spirit will seal you until the day of redemption, which means you cannot lose your salvation. A lot of people... I see the, some of the comments when I say that. And a lot of people say, oh, well, I can still get high. I can still do... People don't understand. <laughs> People, you know what? And the only thing I can do is give you the gospel. You know, like the old saying goes, I can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. Well, that's the same way it is with salvation. You can talk to people and tell them the truth about salvation in the Lord, but you can't make them accept it. So, when you accept Christ as Savior, when you're truly saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, you really don't want to do those things. Now, there's a difference in a slip up or whatever you do. And, you know, I mean, we all do it. We all sin. All of us do. That's why, God, that's why Christ's blood covers our past, present, and future sins because you are sealed. Your soul and your spirit is sealed. Your flesh is not. So the flesh is still there. The thing of it is, you don't want to. You want to do as much as you want to to please God. Whether it's getting in his word every day, whether it's praying every day, whatever. You want to do as much as you want to to please God. Stupid people will come out and say, oh, well, I can do whatever I want. That's the stupidity that is in people when they come out and make comments like that. And I'm calling people out about it, whether they like it or not. You do not want to do what you used to do when you're in Christ, period. But unfortunately, we're still in the flesh. Want a perfect example of people of the flesh? And warring with the flesh, look at what Paul uh, went through in the book of Romans. He said the same thing. Are you still saved? Yes. Yes, you are. And I see, and, and then on the other spectrum of all this, I hear a lot of Pentecostal, Lordship Salvation people coming out of that crap saying, oh, they told me that if I, if I mess up one time, I'm going to hell. Don't believe that. That is not true. Christ, again, uh, shed his blood for our past, present, and future sins. We believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, and we believe in what he did for us. Therefore, you walking in the flesh, you slipping up or... Whatever, you're not going to hell. You're sealed until the day of redemption. And those people who put that type of fear, especially coming out of the Pentecostal movement, woe is them. 
Woe is them. Woe is the person that puts fear in people because it's wrong. But anyway, the Holy Spirit will lead you, the Holy Spirit will guide you, the Holy Spirit is your best friend, and the Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit will change you. I hear people every day and I, I get the comments and I enjoy answering the questions um, coming out of all that, coming out of Catholicism, coming out of Lordship Salvation, coming out of the Pentecostal movement, coming out of all these denominations, all of them, because there's freedom in Christ. There's freedom in the blood of Jesus. I got to give you this article. Now, this article came out a couple of days ago, and I was going to do it, and I actually was going to do it last night because it came out the uh, day before yesterday. But like I said, I took the boys to see uh, Top Gun, Maverick, and um, now Zach is gung-ho about being a fighter pilot, and it just snap something snapped in him after watching that it's a very it's an outstanding if you want to get rid of just free your mind and go watch a movie go see that movie i think it's one of the best i think it is the best actually but anyway u.s department secretary of state wendy sherman has said there would be a forceful Sorry, it's an ambulance. There. Forceful response from the United States, South Korea, and the world if North Korea were to conduct a nuclear test. Get this. U.S. warns of forceful response if North Korea tests a nuclear weapon. I guess they're preparing to test a nuke. They haven't done this since 2017. So, any nuclear test would be in complete violation of the United Nations Security Council resolution and there would be a swift and forceful response to such a test, Sherman told reporters on Tuesday after talks with her South Korean counterpart in Seoul, South Korea. So, like I said, you got, you got Russia, you got Iran, North Korea, they're all just pointing that nuclear flag at the United States. So there's growing concerns in North Korea, which has conducted an, an unprecedented number of missile launches this year, will soon test a nuclear weapon for the first time in 2017. On Monday, South Korea and U.S. forces fired eight surface-to-surface -surface missiles off South Korea's east coast a day after Pyongyang unleashed a barrage of short-range ballistic missiles. The International Atomic Agent Energy Agency has said that North Korean moves to expand key facilities at its main nuclear site continue to advance. A roof has been installed on the annex to, uh, to the reported centrifuge enrichment facility, so the annex is now externally complete. Near the light uh, water reactor, we have observed that the new building that had been under construction since April 2021 has been completed. And construction has started to on two adjacent buildings. Um, IAEF chief uh, said in his quarterly statement on the board on Monday, Rafael Grassi. So it sounds like they're getting ready to start something. He noted that North Korea's nuclear site, there were in indications that one of the passages known as Adits has been reopened, possibly in preparation for a nuclear test. The site was dismantled in 2018 following a summit between North Korean uh, leader and then South Korean President Moon Jae-in. The conduct of the nuclear test would uh, 
contravene UN Security Council resolutions and would be a cause for serious and grave concern. During her visit to Seoul, Sherman reiterated that the U.S. administration remained open to talks. Huh, good luck with that. Uh, discussions on the nuclear denuclearization have been stalled since the collapse of a high-profile summit between Kim and then and uh, President Donald Trump in Vietnam in 2019. The United States harbors no hostile intent towards the uh, DPRK, People's Republic, I think of Korea, that means. We continue to urge Pyongyang to cease, <laughs> to stop destabilizing and uh, provocative activities and choose the path of diplomacy. These people don't know what diplomacy is. I'm telling you, since this man took office in the United States, they're going to they're gonna do whatever they can. They're going to do everything they can because they have the opportunity to do so. That's it. So you got North Korea, Russia, Iran, China. Now they're all waving that nuclear flag. And somebody's going to push a button. And the church, but the church will be gone at that point. The church will be gone. Because I, it's, it's nothing in the Bible indicating that a nuclear exchange has to happen before the rapture. But, and if you look at the book of Zechariah, I think Zechariah 14, this happens after, after all of this. But I don't see I don't see any indication that this is going to happen. I I see an indication that the rapture is coming very very soon, with everything that's going on. And I'm sorry, I still do not see a midterm coming. I I just don't. Now someone had wrote me yesterday, and I'm still trying to find some kind of. Uh, article or something on it that they're talking about postponing the midterms. Now, if they do that, all hell will break loose. For real. If that happens. I'm going to link this article in the description box. I will be back today. Uh, like I said yesterday, we I didn't expect to... Um, I didn't expect to come back as late as I did, but um, we did. And um, like I said, if you want to, I don't recommend movies or Hollywood or anything like that, but that's a darn good movie. Very good. So I will be back later, and the boys highly enjoyed it. So I will be back later with another video. I'm going to actually keep track of this and see if there's anything else on it. But I will be back. Thank you.